Call this meeting of Lima City Council to order. We'll begin tonight's meeting with the invocation by Councillor Gordon, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' most precious name. We ask that you be with us as we make decisions, help keep us wise as, again, we make decisions for your city, Lima, Ohio. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon. Here. Mr. McLean. Here. Mr. Lowe. Here. Mr. Tepin. Here. Ms. Adams. Here. Mr. Glenn. Here. Ms. Miles. Here. And Mr. Nixon. Here. Are there any amendments to tonight's agenda? Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I'd like to remove Ordinance 2714 and add Communication 24 and Ordinance 3314. Second. The motion in the second is to amend tonight's agenda by removing Ordinance 2714, adding Ordinance 3314, and adding Communication number 24. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. <coughs> those opposed? The motion carries. Uh, resolution 114. Mr. President? Ms. Miles. I'll read the title first. Okay. Go ahead. Expressing the appreciation of the Lima City Council to Paige Townsend for her service to the City of Lima as Counselor of the 7th Ward. Mr. President. Ms. Miles. I move that resolution number 114 be adopted on its first reading after having been read. Second. The motion on the second is to adopt resolution 114 on its first reading after having been read. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk read the resolution first. Whereas, after 16 years of service on the Lima City Council, Paige Townsend elected not to run for another term on the Lima City Council as the seventh Lord Counselor. And whereas, during her tenure as a member of Lima City Council, Paige served as a chair of the Economic and Community Development Committee for many years chair of the Human Resource Committee, a member of the Finance Committee, and various other committees. And whereas, Paige Townsend served not only the citizens of the Seventh Ward, but the citizens of Lima with <coughs> honesty and integrity. Paige taught at Lima Senior High School for eight years. Paige recently retired after 18 years of service from the Lima Allen County Council on Community Affairs, where she served as the Micro Enterprise Director, helping people getting started in businesses, and also the Training Director for the Rise Up program, assisting applicants in moving from welfare to work. She was a board member of the Allen Metropolitan Housing and an active member of the West Side Neighborhood Association. <coughs> and whereas during her term in office, Paige Townsend represented her ward with dignity. She was ever mindful of the needs of the residents of the seventh ward and based her decisions on what she believed to be in the best interest of the city and the constituents of the seventh ward. And whereas it is the opinion of this council that the dedication and many contributions of Paige Townsend to the City of Lima should not go unrecognized. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Lima, Ohio, that the Lima City Council extends its sincere appreciation to Paige Townsend for her 16 years of dedicated service to the residents of the Seventh Ward and to the City of Lima, Ohio. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Mr. President, Mr. McLean. You know, I been around a little bit on the council here in the years that I've been with uh, council and Paige has grabbed me by the year a couple of times and told me uh, you know listen to me a little bit and talk to me and tell me why you're thinking this way and we've had some frank discussions and I really appreciated that from her she uh, she made me think about a couple of different ways of, of a couple issues and it opened my eyes and I appreciate her her sincerity in those issues so I'm gonna miss her and I hope that she continues to be active. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. We all, the last meeting that Paige uh, participated in, had a chance to say uh, you know, uh, what our thoughts were relative to Paige. But I just <coughs> want to reiterate, Paige, the amount of great respect I have for you for, for the job that you did and the effort you put into being a city council person. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tevin. Is there any further discussion? I just want to say that I made some comments. Um, oh, now she's peeking around. I can see her. Um, I made some comments at, at your last, at 
the last meeting you were at, Paige, and um, I would still stand by those comments. You're going to be missed. I appreciate everything you've done for the city. I've appreciated all of the guidance and opinion that you've given me over the years. Um, the, I guess the only thing I really I can say now is even though you thought that uh, you wouldn't have to come to a meeting on a cold January night, <laughs> gotcha. Um, I appreciate you coming. So if you'd come, well, well, we need to vote on this first. So I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Teppen? Yes. Miss Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. <laughs> Resolution 114 has been passed on its, been adopted on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. You can say a few words. <laughs> well, Mayor. Mr. Nixon, counselors, I tried to hearken back to uh, any meeting that we'd had where somebody was accepting and whether there was a time limit and there wasn't any so <laughs> <laughs> gotcha <laughs> you know I, I wanted to um, leave tonight and leave you all with something finding something meaningful with some substance to show my appreciation because you've all we you know we've all gotten close over the years and even Ann and I just in the short time we've known each other so um, I thought well what, what can I bring tonight to give these folks and I thought of an expensive gift and then I knew Mr. Geiger would report us all to the Ethics Commission <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't gonna work um, but I've just read a book completed a book from good to great it's by Jim Collins and it's about a team that he formed to look into how businesses corporations uh, go from good and transition into great organizations and there were 11 companies that they identified um, and I won't go into all of them, uh, how Kroger uh, distanced itself from A&P, how um, Kimberly-Clark uh, took on Procter & Gamble, and these companies rose and sustained for 15 years a successful track record and beat the market soundly. So, in that book, I was struck by a quote in the second chapter, and uh, I think the, um, the CEOs that led those companies in that transition, you'd never know their name. I mean, it, they weren't uh, Jack Welch, who took GE out of the depths, or Lee Iacocca, who helped Chrysler because when those two left those two companies went back and declined but these 11 companies continued so I brought this quote that I hope in your leadership roles uh, it will be a prompt for you to look you're all good at to how you can become great no this is not the mayor's salary on here <laughs> you can accomplish anything in life if you don't mind who gets the credit and so I had I've made a little card for each of you <laughs> thank you very much appreciate that Sorry, it's Thank such you. a long agenda tonight. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paige. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paige. Thank you, Paige. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.
That is nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Appreciate all your work. And in conclusion, <laughs> I also thought back on over the years when we would have people come to our meetings and how sometimes we were uncomplimentary in private discussions when they left after their presentation. But you can add me to that list. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remind members she has ears everywhere. <laughs> okay. I Thank you, Paige. Uh, resolution 214. Expressing the appreciation of the Lima City Council to Kurt Nieper for his service to the City of Lima as Councilor of First Ward. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that resolution number 2-14 be adopted on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to adopt resolution 214 on its first reading. Uh, we'll have the clerk read the resolution. Whereas Kurt Nieper was elected to serve as First Ward Councilor in January 2010, and whereas during his tenure as a member of the Lima City Council, Kurt served as the chair of the Public Works Committee for all four years and served as a member on the Finance Committee, Community and Economic Development Committee, and the Neighborhood Concerns Committee, and whereas Kurt Nieper served not only the citizens of the First Ward but the citizens of Lima with honesty and integrity. Kurt has been a longtime chair of the Star Spangled Spectacular and also the organizer of the movies in the park. And whereas during his term in office, Kurt Nieper represented his ward with dignity. He was ever mindful of the needs of the residents of the first ward and based his decisions on what he believed to be in the best interest of the city and the constituents of the first ward. And whereas it is the opinion of this council that the dedication and many contributions of Kurt Nieper to the city of Lima should not go unrecognized. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Lima, Ohio, that the Lima City Council extends its sincere appreciation to Kurt Nieper for his four years of dedicated service to the residents of the First Ward and to the City of Lima, Ohio. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. McLean. Kurt, uh, you know, it was kind of fun sitting beside you. We always laugh a few jokes, a few laughs. And kicking underneath the table and stuff like that. So I'm going to miss that. I think uh, Todd might take your place, though. <laughs> that time, a long time also. So uh, I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors and whatever you do. And uh, we're sure going to be missed here. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. Kirk, good luck on everything you do. We appreciate everything you have done. Uh, the greatest thing we loved when you brought the movies to the park and the at the Martin Luther King Park, even though it rained that day, but everybody's very excited about it. And all the stuff you do in the community, you, know, you always do stuff, number one, there. And uh, Fourth of July, you, you, I know you put a lot of time and work in there. Uh, wonderful wife, uh, you know, and your dogs. And, but uh, <laughs> thank you so much, you know. And good luck in your race you want in. And you will be hearing from me when you win because I got a lot to overhaul the school thing. You know when we talk about the school, but uh, it's great though. <coughs> Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Is there any further discussion? I just want to uh, congratulate you, Kurt. Thank you for your service. I appreciate it. Um, I know the residents appreciated it, and um, I think in in as history goes down, you'll be one of the good guys. So thank you very much. Um, I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Resolution 214 has been adopted on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. <laughs> Baby D. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess, I guess. <laughs> in, in my typical fashion, I will try and keep it very short, including not commenting on <laughs> any comparisons or nicknames such as Baby D. You know, four years I served on this council, I never got talked to more in public about any single issue than 
being called Davy D in my last <laughs> meeting. So it's good to know it was all worth it. it was all, all those late nights were worth it. But, uh, I, I truly am, am humbled and honored to be here. Um, four years went, went very fast with all of you. And uh, I feel like I made nine uh, new friends when I was here, as, as well as many people in the administration. And I appreciate all you guys have taught me. Uh, and, and I hope that I was able to teach you guys a little bit uh, along the way as well. Um, you know, all I wanted to do when I ran for city council was, was find another way to serve uh, this community, which has been so great to me uh, and that I love so much. And, and uh, I, I look at, you know, new councilors tonight and I, I think, you know, as long as you th keep everyone in, in the city and the people here in, in mind first, uh, you guys will, will certainly do well. Um, and I encourage people out there who think about it in the future, um, you know, I, not to take away from any of the work that we do, but there's a lot more people out there who could serve in, the, in this way, and I encourage you to take that step. You'll, you'll, you'll make a lifetime of, of memories and friends and uh, learn a lot about uh, the people that you live around and, and with. So thank you. and. Uh, I'll try and be a little mindful of the agenda tonight. I'm, I'm glad for the first time I'm, I'm at the front of the agenda tonight. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Resolution 314. A resolution of appreciation to Gene Raymond for his service as auditor of the city of Lima. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that resolution 3-14 be passed on its first reading after having been read. Second. The motion in the second is to adopt resolution 314 on its first reading after having been read. Is there any, well, I guess we'll have the clerk read the resolution first, then we'll have discussion. Whereas, after serving four terms as the auditor of the city of Lima, Gene Riemann chose not to run for another term. And whereas, Gene is a lifelong resident of the city of Lima. He graduated from St. Rose School in 1954 and went on to the University of Cincinnati where he received a degree in pharmacy in 1958. Gene served the residents of Lima and Allen County for many years as a pharmacist and businessman in the community. And whereas in 1997, Gene Riemann decided to run for the position of auditor for the city of Lima. Gene was elected and took office in 1998 and served in that position until his retirement in 2013. And whereas under Gene's leadership, the auditor's office began preparing their own financial statements and improve the results of the annual audits dramatically. Gene was also instrumental in updating the city's purchasing policy and the auditor's accounting software. And whereas it is the opinion of this council that the dedication and many contributions of Gene Riemann to the citizens of Lima should not go unrecognized. Now therefore be it resolved by the council of the city of Lima, Ohio, that the council of the city of Lima formally expresses its sincere appreciation to Gene Riemann for his many years of dedicated and distinctive service as the auditor of the city of Lima, Ohio. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. Gene, you know, I want to thank you for, for the leadership that uh, you provided to, to your department and for the positive changes that were made because it was a huge contribution to the city. I remember the headlines before Gene was in office relative to the city finances and uh, through Gene's efforts and leadership, uh, it, it led to a position of stability. It led to uh, the fact that we had books and, and figures that could be trusted and, and you could develop plans using uh, the information provided from the auditor's office. So thank you very much. You, you did make a big difference in the community and, and the community does appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tevin. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Glenn. Yes. I was going to echo a little bit more over there, but when Mr. Ramey came around, it, I mean, everything went good. And most people don't know how important your your role is with the city, you know, why I keep our city balanced and everything. It was a lot of different things there when I first came on city council. A lot of things was going on there, but you <coughs> came in there and cleaned it up. You know, people seen you there. and. Like I always say, when you, uh, a couple weeks ago, 
You can come up, ask you a question. You're gonna tell us about it. I mean, you're not gonna turn no corners. You're gonna be just straightforward with it. How this go? What this? What this all about? Why we got to do it this way? And the reason why? And I appreciate that. You're gonna be really missed. But I think you got a good leadership team. Another person that you have worked with, and he he was right under you. He gonna do a good job too. And I feel that we got the city of Lima under good hands with him. So thank you so much for what you have done for our great city. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Mr. McLean. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Freeman, you know, you may your title may have said auditor and may, may have said in our, our uh, part time. You gave it a full time effort. Mm -hmm. you, you always were uh, very upfront, very frank. Mm -hmm. And if I needed information, mm -hmm. you were readily there. You, your team with Randy and everyone underneath you was with a wealth of information for me when I was new and as we continued through. And uh, I knew you outside of, of council a little bit. Uh, and I'm still wondering why you're here today because I know you could be in some place that's warm. <laughs> so I do appreciate your efforts and everything that you gave me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Is there any further discussion? Gene, it dawned on me as Sally was reading this that and it kind of ties into a comment that uh, Mr. Nieper made. You know, it doesn't seem like it was 16 years, but four terms is 16 years of service. And those 16 years flew by. And over the time, um, Kurt is right, you do make a lifetime of memories and a lifetime of friends. And even though we had jobs to do, and sometimes uh, we agreed and sometimes we didn't. We always found a way to work through it. And in that process, I think I made a good friend. You've always been a gentleman, even in disagreement, and I respect that and I appreciate that and your advice and guidance over the years. Um, I'll have the clerk call the roll, but I want to know, I want you to know that I very much appreciate your service. Thank you. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Teppen? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Resolution 3-14 has been adopted on its first reading by unanimous vote. Mm -hmm. I don't have the book like page ads. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to thank this, this present council and all of the previous councils that I've worked with. Uh, not only you, but the mayor and all the city administrators and the uh, city residents and also Tony. <laughs> you know, we, we work together and I, I'd like to thank, and, and you said it, so I guess I can say that we tried to do that is that we tried to work through things as best we could without being nasty about it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we just would have to say no, but it always worked. Um, secondly, it was just a real privilege to be the auditor for the city of Lima for 16 years. And probably the other thing is I really need to thank the mayor and Gary Sheely because they had a direct or indirect effect on Randy probably in becoming the auditor <laughs> because and they were gracious enough at that time to approve having Randy come from utility department to the auditor's office so and it was a blessing and a great asset to have him and I'm sure it will continue to be so in the future so thank you thank you Gene. all right And I, I weigh a little more because I got a big head from all you guys. <laughs> um, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that item A 
of the consent calendar be received, filed, and approved, and item B and C be received and filed. Second. The motion the second is that item A be received, filed, and approved, and that items B and C be received and filed. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> the motion carries. Communication number one. From Chief Martin regarding legislation for disbursement of funds from the Law Enforcement Trust Fund. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that communication number one be received and filed. Second. The motion of the second is to receive and file communication number one. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number two. From the Deputy Director of Utilities regarding legislation for an emergency repair. Mr. President. Mr. McClain. I move that communication number two be received and filed. Second. The motion on the second is to receive and file communication number two. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number three. From the Director of Utilities regarding legislation for a change order for the Cambridge Center renovations. Mr. President. Mr. McClain. I move that communication number three be received and filed. Second. The motion on the second is to receive and file communication number three. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number four. From the Director of Utilities regarding legislation for additional expenditure for A&E services for the Cambridge Center. Mr. President. Mr. McClain. I move that communication number four be received and filed. Second. Second. The motion of the second is to receive and file communication number four. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number five. From the Director of Utilities requesting legislation to enter into an agreement with Azteca Systems, Inc. Mr. President. Mr. McClain. I move that communication number five be received and filed and authorize the law director to, to prepare any necessary legislation. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number five and to authorize the law director to prepare the necessary <coughs> legislation. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number six. From the Director of Utilities regarding legislation for professional services with Geosyntech Consultants. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that communication number six be received and filed. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number six. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number seven. From the auditor regarding the contract labor report. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move the communication number seven be received and filed. Second. second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number seven. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number eight. From the auditor regarding legislation to enter into a contract with Spirion. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that communication number eight be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number eight. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number nine. From Art Space Lima requesting legislation to hold the rally in the square. Mr. President. <coughs> Mr. Law. I move that communication number nine be received and filed. And approved. Second. The motion of the second is to receive, file, and approve communication number nine. Is there any discussion? I think we need legislation. Um, so, question for the law director. Does this require legislation? Uh, yes, because we provide them with exclusive use of that. Okay. It's uh, actually on tonight's agenda. No, that's square well, it's square affair. Um, Mr. Lowe, would you amend your... Mr. President, I'd like to amend my motion, and I would like to move that communication be received, filed, approved, and legislation be prepared by the law director. Second. second. The motion of the second is that communication number nine be received and filed, and the law director prepare, uh, authorized to prepare the necessary legislation. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? 
motion carries. Communication number 10. From the Director of Community Development regarding legislation to place property maintenance assessments. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move to communication number 10, receive and file legislation on the night agenda. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 10. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Besides that little musical. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Communication number 11. From the Director of Community Development regarding legislation to place tax assessments for specified parcels. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I'm going to communication number 11, receive and file legislation on my agenda. Second. second. The motion and the second is to receive and file <coughs> communication number 11. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 12. From the Director of Community Development regarding legislation to place tax assessments. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move to communication number 12, receive and file legislation on the night agenda. Second. The motion on the second is to receive and file communication number 12. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 13. From the finance director regarding legislation to request additional funds for professional financial services. Mr. President. Mr. Tebbett. I move that communication number 13 be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. Motion the second is to receive and file communication number 13. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 14. From the Director of Community Development regarding legislation to place property maintenance assessments. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move to communication number 14, receive and file legislation on the night agenda. Second. second. The motion on the second is to receive and file communication number 14. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 15. From the Ohio Division of Liquor Control regarding a transfer of stock to JTR Inc. DBA race place at 200 West Grand Street. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that communication number 15 be received, filed, and the clerk authorized to file with no objections with the Ohio Board of Liquor Control. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 15 and to authorize the clerk to file a no objections with the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 16. From the Director of Public Works regarding legislation to amend the contract with Perry Protec. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number 16 be received and filed. Legislations on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 16. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 17. From the Director of Public Works regarding legislation to enter into a contract with AEP Ohio for Energy Saver Program. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number 17 be received and filed. Um, legislations on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 17. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Lowe? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give the other counselors something to think about before we get to that because I know it's on tonight's legislation. Um, I did receive a phone call explaining this program and I talked with Mr. Elstro tonight and we're just kind of agreeing to disagree. Uh, this project will be happening over at Simmons Field. Uh, I've been on council for four years and in Lincoln Park and in Schoonover Park I've been asking for the same things for four years and my belief is if we can find money or AEP energy in this case that's willing to help us, I think the wealth should be spread in other parks. Um, this is for lighting, upgrading, I believe some new fencing. Uh, I have asked for the same for Lincoln and Schoonover Park. I still have not received it. Um, my further opinions, I won't state it until the end of close tonight. 
but the bottom line is this. We can't pick certain parts to keep upgrading. Simmons Field is used, uh, let's say, about three months out of the year. While I support the Lama Locals, I've been to the games of the Lama Locals. At the same time, again, there's other parts. We've got individuals that, that would like to shoot basketball, uh, and which could do that spring, summer, and fall instead of just three months. So I just want the other counselors to think about this. Um, these two field, this field, uh, we've seen lights, we've seen sprinkler systems, we've seen a park at Froke that's immaculate. Uh, and some of the other parks aren't getting the same attention. And, and I've, I've been pretty much begging <coughs> for some upgrades in Schoonover's. Schoonover Park just happens to be one of the parks where we got six predators in about a nine block radius. They need lighting over there also. So it's a safety concern of mine, and, and also it, it needs upgraded. The basketball courts are horrible. Uh, we want the kids to get out and take part in the park, but we're not supplying them with it. Uh, last year, they did go out and paint the backboards. We could have did that on Make a Difference Day. But I'll just say, it, it needs upgraded. And for, so for that reason, uh, I will not be supporting this tonight. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Communication number 18. From the Director of Public Works regarding legislation to enter into a contract with Allen Soil and Water Conservation. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number 18 be received and filed and the law director be authorized to prepare the necessary legislation to comply with the request. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 18 and to authorize the law director to prepare any legislation if needed. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Communication number 19. From the Director of Public Works regarding legislation to amend the contract with Hume Construction. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication be received and filed legislations on tonight's agenda. Second. second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 19. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. Thank you. Um, I came across some information this week, and I would like, if possible, if Mr. Howard Elstro could come forward and maybe explain exactly what happened. Um, in the manner these houses were taken down. I have some paperwork that I'd like to hand to him. Uh, and it's, it's based off of some of the bids that came in. Um, some were torn down, some weren't torn down. It mentions a garage being torn down. But at the end of the day, uh, they went over what was, correct me if I'm wrong, but they went over what was um, what they bid on, and it's over the 10% that we should have been informed as council that they were that we were going to spend, and I do not believe we were notified. Mr. Elstro, the uh, letter that you have before you is requesting legislation to amend a contract with Hume, Hume Construction for the property formerly known as 430, 436 McFerrin Avenue, which was approved by the bidding process and demolished by Ordinance 16213. The original contract amount was 17,500, and during the abatement, um, there was an additional asbestos found in the building, about 500 square feet. It was discovered um, as I say, during the demolition, um, in the demolition, uh, in the course of demolition work, uh, you can try to uh, understand what you're about to demolish, but sometimes there is hidden <coughs> materials or unforeseen uh, asbestos, and that was the case in this particular instance. So instead of 17,500, 
uh, we're asking that it be increased four thousand dollars to uh, twenty one thousand five hundred and that is coming from the moving Ohio forward grant not the general fund of the city of Lima and not our community development block grant uh, as to the uh, question from Mr. Lowe, does this exceed the, the uh, 10%? Well, it does. But uh, if you recall, uh, there is also not to be a work stoppage, uh, especially in instances that would cost the contractor in the city more had there been a work stoppage. So those are the circumstances. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. And also understanding that we also made a verbal agreement that we would uh, notify the committee chair of that. It wasn't done. I, was, I don't know what else to say. We just we weren't, we weren't told that. When was the work actually done? I don't know, sir. <coughs> um, you know, we have many, many projects and uh, we try to follow these the best that we can with the people that we have available. I try to bring information to council's attention as quickly as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. Howard, if I may, uh, I was given this packet earlier this evening. And looking at the original ordinance, um, there were four properties listed. Uh, McFerrin being one of them, uh, Finley Road, West North Street, and West Market Street. And um, three of these were done <coughs> under the uh, Attorney General Fund. And the fourth one was done, I assume, under CDBG. Um, this original ordinance totaled $53,129. And an invoice I'm looking at dated November 13th, received on the 15th, lists the Finley Road McFerrin duplex of the 17500 that you noted. Finley Road at 6,670 and a garage 968 West North Street for uh, 45.59 um, and that totaled uh, 28,729. Um, which is what they had invoiced, Hume had invoiced. At some point it was corrected to 25000 And I guess what I'm getting at is, um, you know, the breakdown of specific parcels, you know, the 17.5. All we have is that total of 53,000 and plus. And, and again, I don't see the West Market Street duplex listed on here. And I, I'm, I'm wondering, Mr. President, if because different funding was used, if we should not have put in a new ordinance showing those three properties being funded under Attorney General moving Ohio forward I believe it is and leaving alone the original six, ordinance six, what, 162 to handle the West Market Street and whatever else and, and correct that amount because um, we're, we're kind of mixing The scope, okay, I for guess. First President. Mr. President. Can I say something first, please? Uh, the original amount of Ordinance 162 was 53000 
129. Yes. Okay. And the change is 4,000, which is less than the 10%. Okay. Right. Um, if Ordinance 162 involved multiple properties, the ordinance passed was still 53,000. The 4,000 is less than the 10%, which doesn't trigger the uh, the need that we had spoken about of informing the committee chairman. Okay. Um, so I just want to make sure that I heard you correct. Okay. I right. wanted to draw that out. All right. Good Mr. Point. Mayor. I guess my question um, is what's the value? What's the value? I mean, we have no problem sharing information in as timely a fashion as possible. But what you're suggesting potentially is that we tie ourselves in a variety of procedural knots in order to ultimately come to a conclusion where we're going to pay the bill. And so my sense here is, is that nothing's been done that's inappropriate. Nothing's been done here that is other than a communications question, and we are now communicating. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Elster, were you going to say something different? Okay. Um, Mr. Lowe. All right, Ms. Adams. Um, based on what Mr. President just said, based on the ordinance in this change, as of right now, you didn't need the communication that you're asking for tonight. Didn't need it, but they provided it, I think is the way I understood this. Mr. President. Mr. Bartels, not, sorry. Not to go into our purchasing policy in great detail, but the purchasing policy stipulates if, there, if a change order is in excess of 10%, council permission before the work is done is required. If there is a change order, if there is any change order, period, to a contract that increases the price, council permission is, is required before we pay the invoice. Okay. So yes, they did need the communication, and okay. they do need you to pass an ordinance tonight before we'll pay that invoice. Okay. Mr. President. Mr. Love. Okay. This is a matter of trying to put nobody in no knots. It's, it's right here. It's in black and white. My thing is this. I said this almost two years ago, and, and I said this privately with an individual, and I said, well, actually, I did say it publicly once, but what I said to the individual is, it seems funny to me that we got certain contractors in the city that receive contracts, and it's, oops, I didn't see that, or oops, we weren't expecting, but it's all the time. It's the same people, and, and I guess that's what my... I guess this was just another warning sign that kind of jumped out at me. Because if we, if we underbid, if we continue to keep underbidding on other people, and then all of a sudden we get on the job, then we're really not underbidding them. And I think we need to maybe kind of keep a history on those that are, are doing this. I, I, I mentioned this two years back. That's, that's it, Mr. President. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I would just like to sum up that under the ordinance 162.13, we were given a total. No breakdown of the individual pieces of property. And under this change, communication 19, we were, we're you know, the original contract in the amount of 17.5 was just for that property, not the remaining three. So I, I, I would be a, more comfortable going forward if we could see the breakdown for the remaining three properties so that we can get a total for this overall 53129 I mean, I see an invoice where it's marked um, the Finley Road was, like I said, 6670. It's handwritten and a garage on West North Street, but I still see 
And it maybe it's not demoed yet, the one on West Market. You know. And did that remain under CDBG? And the only ones we removed, the three we removed for the Attorney General moving Ohio forward, were the three <coughs> Finley, North Street, and McFerrin. Um, no one is implying. Not at all. It's just. No one's um, implying. That anything underhanded occurred. Mr. Lowe has. No, I have not. How can you say you didn't? Uh, real simple. That's not what I was saying. What I was saying is if you're going to hand me paperwork and I'm going to receive paperwork, make sure it's on point. It's confusing. I just want clarity. That's all I'm asking. Don't, don't put words in my mouth because that's not what I'm saying. I just want clarity. This, wow. if, if, if I looked at this, the way it was handed to me, it looks wrong. I just want clarity. I didn't accuse you of nothing. If it adds up, it adds up. <laughs> Mr. Lowe, Mr. Lowe Mr. you just accused the contractor of playing games. No, I accused, I'm telling you right now that we have contractors that come to this city and they bid, and I've seen it in the past and I've asked several times, why does this individual always come back? Because they always find a couple thousand more dollars and we end up paying them, but we can't get other things around this city. That's, that's my problem. We that's, come up for money. That's for an allegation and I reject it. Well, you just have to agree to disagree. Wow. Is there any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. The motion, the motion carries. Communication number 20. From the director of, or from the city engineer regarding legislation to levy assessments for construction of sidewalks. Mr. President. Ms. Adams? Communication. I, excuse me. I move that communication number 20 be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion of the second is to receive and file communication number 20. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 21. From the Director of Public Works regarding legislation to apply for and expend Clean Ohio funds. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number 21 be received and filed and the law director be authorized to prepare the necessary legislation to comply with the request. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 21 and to authorize the law director to prepare any necessary legislation. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. McLean. Um, I'm familiar with this button bush preserve. Is there acreage that is that area out there uh, privately owned? Mr. Elstrom. Yeah. Um, Mr. McLean, um, the button bush um, preserve uh, is in existence, and you may recall voting on legislation a couple of years ago for. Uh, phase five of the bikeway, which enabled us to pick up another parcel immediately adjacent to the uh, long established Buttonbush Preserve in Central Point Business Park. Uh, what this proposal is, is to allow us to submit yet one more application to the clean, through the Clean Ohio funds, uh, which will allow us to purchase two additional um, parcels uh, from the Allen County Development Corporation, which is the um, owner of record for these two parcels. These two parcels are as well uh, adjacent to the existing uh, Button Bush Preserve. Uh, if we are successful in securing the funds for the acquisition and development of uh, these two additional parcels, um, the size of the preserve will then be uh, off the top of my head, about uh, 30 acres, I believe. This acquisition of these two last parcels uh, will be enough that we can put uh, walking and biking paths through the and around the uh, uh, central uh, the Button Bush Preserve. And again, uh, this allows us for um, to apply for these funds. Is that helpful? Somewhat. I just guess I'm I'm trying to figure out why we 
are developing in wetlands around that wetlands. I'm just I understand we want to put a bike path to it, but well, that's what this. There are four prongs of the Clean Ohio funds. This is for open space acquisition, which uh, centers around setting lands aside for recreation and natural use and uh, wetlands issues. Uh, the soils are significant uh, uh, of interest for a, 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 a wetland in this area. And in fact, it's better uh, to be allowed to revert to the wetlands than try to develop it. The, these soils are uh, of such a nature it would be much harder to develop into an industrial uh, so, so basically use. what you're saying is no one's going to develop it anyway that we're going to buy it? Well, don't know that. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know that anyone's going to buy it, and uh, this would put it to good use for recreation and, and wetland preserves. <coughs> Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Communication number 22. <coughs> From the Director of Public Works regarding legislation to allow the mayor to dispose of residual parcels. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number 22 be received and filed and that the uh, law director be authorized to prepare the necessary legislation to comply with the request. Second. The motion and the second is to Receive and file communication number 22 and to authorize the law director to prepare the necessary legislation. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 23. From the law director regarding treatment of sick leave and bonus vacation for employees retired and rehired. Mr. President. Mrs. Miles. I move that communication number 23 be received and filed and referred to the HR committee for further review. Second. second. Motion the second is to receive and file communication number 23 and to refer it to Council's Human Resources Committee for review. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 24. From the Director of Public Works regarding legislation to purchase rock salt. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number 24 be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion on the second is to receive and file communication number 24. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Reports of officials. First up is Amy Odom and Pete White regarding property maintenance. Mr. President, council members, um, to keep this brief this evening because of the agenda, we're providing to each council member a copy of a PowerPoint that will be used, um, which will be posted on the city website um, and or property maintenance. Some of the information provided to you should be familiar. The first couple pages really are just an explanation um, of why we need property maintenance. There's some very colorful pictures explaining that. Also talking about just a general summary of um, the activity that Mr. White and the property maintenance staff have undertaken in 2013. Um, in general, for the uh, year of 2013, 55% <coughs> of our activity involves grass and weed complaints, 27, the next percentage is trash and junk, and then board ups and property maintenance, 6% are barred up requests, 5% uh, are property maintenance or structural complaints, 6% are junk autos, and 1% are uh, requests <coughs> to declare structures unfit for habitation. Um, as part of this program, as you know, over the years, we've also created the specified parcel program. That's where our inspectors maintain over 600 vacant properties um, each year that can be mowed up to six times a year. Uh, the budget for property maintenance is approximately $505,000 a year. That includes the cost of mowing, trash cleanup, securing buildings, and also salaries and supplies. I'd also like to make the point that this, proper, this entire program has involved over the last 20 years we've had property maintenance. 
Um, each of the property maintenance uh, inspectors that we have now truly are not full-time inspectors because they've been tasked with additional duties. Each of them, instead of doing full-time inspection, have other um, services that they provide to the cities of, of citizens of Lima, such as managing our land bank, such as managing the specified parcel program, um, working uh, back up as our um, in data entry and um, data um, collection. And so when we talk about uh, the, our property maintenance department originally, and you'll find um, the table of organization in here, originally when we um, uh, talked about a property maintenance department in its inception, we were to have actually five property maintenance inspectors. Right now we operate with three and a half because we also use our housing um, inspector part-time in property maintenance. And please keep in mind the uh, three are also doing additional duties. Um, Originally, the entire department was to have 21 persons. We have operated um, currently with nine full-time um, employees, one part-time employee, and one proposed part-time seasonal employee. But again, for your property mates inspectors, they're doing an incredible amount of work um, for the amount of time that they have to devote to inspection. When you get to talk about the activity for 2013, again, I want to commend um, Pete White, who is our supervising inspector and also our land bank officer, for working with the property maintenance inspectors that are assigned to the uh, four sectors of the city. Over 3,225 3, 3, letters of violation were sent out to property owners, and 954 work orders were issued meaning that contractors were sent out 954 times to remediate violations. The violations that they remediate when they go out may be more than one type of violation, meaning it may be weeds, it may be weeds and trash, it may be weeds, trash, board up. So with those 954 work orders, over 1,208 types of violation or 1,208 um, <coughs> instances of violations were remediated. If you look at the um, table that was provided, uh, it does show that by type, uh, the kind of work that we've done, again, the majority of the work does fall into trash and weeds, weeds or trash. Um, the board up and board up um, related types of activity are less. Um, the majority, it shows that over 556 weed remediations were done, 502 trash and 160 board ups. 37% um, of all notices that are sent out end up having to be remediated by contractors. When you um, talk about that, I think that um, it is important to look at why. And the reason why is that over 60% of our activity is on vacant property. It's either on vacant lots or vacant buildings. Um, there was a question asked by council regarding invoicing, meaning how is the money spent and how much is collected. You will also find a um, chart in there for 2013 showing that in invoicing, <coughs> over 3,443 individual parcels received an invoice for some type of work. Um, that's inclusive of penalties as well as contractor costs. And that we ended up actually invoicing almost a million dollars. Um, $969,507 were invoiced last year or sent out to property owners. Um, 770000 of that ends up being placed on taxes last year. That was a question Ms. Adams has asked in the past. Um, so $770,000 uh, involving 3,443 3, parcels ended up being placed on taxes. The good news, if there is any <coughs> involving that, is that we do have some collection that is made in office, in the office, and some collection that comes in through tax assessments. Far and away, the largest amount of collection that we receive is through our tax collection. Um, over $279,000 was received last year in property taxes, specifically for property maintenance violations. A much smaller amount, about $33,000, comes in over the counter. People will actually come in and pay their, um, their costs. So when you look at that, the good news is, if you, if you do the calculations on that information, is that we actually were able to collect, to cover the cost of our contractor costs. That indeed um, our payments um, exceeded that by about $49,000. 
Um, that's helpful. That's why we have fees and penalties, because if you remember, the fees, fines, and penalties are to cover the salary costs and the equipment costs and the other costs the taxpayers bear when we're going out to do cleanup. So overall, the good news, if anything, is that we were able to cover our contractor costs and recoup a small amount, about $49,000 beyond that, to then apply towards um, the additional costs of property maintenance. Again, um, if you look at what kinds of inspections are done, over 60% of our work falls into work on vacant properties and lots. There is a, um, a uh, pie chart there for you showing that out of 7,216 inspections on 2,300 properties, the majority, 41% uh, are on vacant lots. That's going to be for trash and weeds, possibly open excavation. And um, the 18% uh, is going to be on vacant buildings. When you look at the occupied buildings, the number of complaints that come in on tenant occupieds are about 26% of our workload and 15% come in on owner-occupied units. Um, so again, it's showing that the majority of our work continues to be on vacant and bonded property. Um, the next chart will show you, as I've stated earlier, the majority of our work does end up being on weeds, trash, um, board up, and then going into property maintenance, junk auto, and the other types. And about 25% um, of our weeds are now handled, an additional 25% of work is now handled through our specified parcel program. As for total inspections, if you look at the very last page, um, it's going to show you over the years from 2009 to 2013 how we varied in terms of the number of total inspections, and the number of properties we've um, worked with, and also the types of uh, violations that we've dealt with. Variation, quite frankly, in, in between the years and total inspections has a lot to do with staffing. Depends upon the number of inspectors that we, inspections we may have had that year. Um, similarly, the, the total number of, of, or rather the amount of inspections by type may vary slightly. Um, in the year that we had the ice storm, um, which was uh, 2011, I believe we had more weeds trash um, pick up that year um, because of the uh, remainder uh, that needed to be dealt with through notices of violation. Um, you will see consistently that weeds, trash, lead the field, but also um, there were concerns about junk auto and how that's been addressed. It will show you that, um, again, um, it varies anywhere between 2 to 6 percent of the notices of violation that we um, um, handle. Um, this year, 627 junk auto uh, complaints were um, addressed by the Department of Community Development. I'm pleased to say that the addition of the part-time um, officer, even in the short period of time he was with us, was very helpful. And what we found basically proved out what we talked about during um, the discussions with the Community and Economic Development Committee, that um, direct contact by that officer, because a, a, an officer, a sworn officer, has the ability to use um, the um, VIN number and the vehicle um, inspections to be able to look up who owns the uh, vehicle while an unsworn officer or property uh, maintenance officer cannot. Um, uh, the officers were able to use that to good um, purpose, meaning if you know who the vehicle owner is, they went out and talked to them. We did not have, bottom line, we didn't have a lot of tows, but we had a lot of resolutions. And um, that's what we'd like to see, again, getting people to move their vehicles on their own so you as the taxpayer are not paying for it. Um, I promised I would speed talk my way through this due to the amount of uh, data that is on the um, agenda tonight, but this is going to be posted on the property maintenance website at the, in the um, city's website. Does anyone have any direct questions about this, or I'd be more than happy to meet with you later if you'd like more detail. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. Amy, I would just like to say hats off. Um, it hasn't been one time lately until I can remember. That I haven't called and asked a question on property maintenance, uh, that it wasn't answered most of the time right then and there. So I just uh, thank your, part, uh, your department and your secretary. I don't know how she does it, but she does a fantastic job, uh, Ms. Sarah. So and, please uh, make sure you pass that on to her. I will. I uh, hate to announce that I am losing her to Mr. Sheely. Um, oh, in a, in a uh, brief period of time, <laughs> but um, uh, Sarah Sherrick should also be recognized for the amounting of uh, the amazing work mm -hmm. that she's been able to do with us. She is very customer service oriented. Yes, yes. 
I, one more comment, Mr. President, which is, and, and the mayor had asked, what are the headlines? What, what are the, the, the takeaways from the presentation today? And I, I want to reiterate, the takeaway should be that we do an amazing amount of work with a very small staff and have increased the number of services provided to the city of Lima, even with half the staff um, that we um, were originally structured for. The other is, what is the ongoing challenge? As you look at this data, it again and again speaks, we have <coughs> issues to deal with on vacant and abandoned property. Land aggregation, land bank, um, and resale of property must become a, uh, a priority for this community if we're going to continue to thrive and to grow in such a way that makes sense for our current configuration of population, age, and need. Um, I think that we will be coming forward to you in the next few months to talk more about our land bank programs, talk more about our neighborhood support programs, to see what we can be doing to move forward on uh, making use of the land that is currently costing taxpayers money and putting it back into productive use. Okay. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I just have a couple things, though. But uh, like I say, Amy, I appreciate <coughs> This is really nice here. Great. And it's a good tool that we can use when we're talking to our constituents. Mm -hmm. Also, I appreciate how we handle that. And I say we because you learned me a lot there. Mm -hmm. We handled that problem there, and the guy was absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. And you kept it very soft and very understandable for mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And it was great. And I know we're going to be dealing with a lot of more of them issues that we dealt with mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. And uh, this shows right here. And this is great, and it's readable. <coughs> understandable and everyone can you know you can take it to your stitch with and show what the work we are doing in the city of Lima show what kind of money it's costing and show the manpower we're doing it with so mm -hmm. this is great thank you thank you mr. Glenn again I want to continue to to recognize our um, supervising inspector and land bank officer Pete White who put together um, this presentation for this evening. Um, he and with some assistance from Krista Sprouse and Sarah Sherrick uh, did all the data crunching. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. Um, don't want to repeat what else what's already been said but mm -hmm. having been the chairman the last two years um, I want to thank you for your leadership, your staff, uh, as a counselor of the fifth ward, uh, they received many calls from me, and uh, I've always gotten great response, uh, timely, and uh, appreciate this information. As Counselor Glenn said, that it's something we can work with, mm -hmm. take back to our neighborhood associations and uh, explain. And people that want to know why you know, more money isn't being spent in CDBG mm -hmm. for other programs, um, this uh, invoice amount mm -hmm. uh, speaks to a lot of that. That you know, as tax dollars, I wish we could spend mm -hmm. in these other programs of education and mm -hmm. housing and home ownership. So, mm -hmm. um, again, thank you and. Uh, the numbers don't surprise me, having been on council for the past four years. I mm -hmm. am well aware of your continued hard work and uh, due diligence on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Um, Amy, I'm just going to make one comment that I think that going forward, it's interesting to note that, <coughs> just a quick glance at this, um, we are averaging four plus inspections per property. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if there is, um, you know, there's a reduction of properties by about 200. Mm -hmm. Were any of those demolished? Number two, do we need to increase again a level when there is a fourth? third or fourth inspection required for the same issue. And I guess what I'm saying is, will that somehow mm -hmm. um, increase the response on the first or second inspection? And do we need to revisit uh, a surcharge for placement on taxes? Because let's face it, when it's placed on the taxes, we don't start to see those dollars for another 18 months. 
at 12 least. to 18 months, okay, if they're paid at all. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, just from a purely fiscal standpoint, um, I would be interesting through the course of this next year to see what input and feedback you have from that. Sure. All right. Quickly, all good questions. Um, we do, if there is, um, for a proper, for existing structure as an example, if we, uh, they do not comply and receive the $350 fine for not making structural improvements, those additional inspections, there is an additional $75 fee for, for continuing to do that. Yeah. Um, if it needs to increase, I would certainly, I would welcome that discussion. And yes, you are correct. If you look at the a reduction in the number of property maintenance complaints, it is because through uh, Mr. Elstro's uh, good office and that of uh, Mr. Brown, over 278 uh, properties have been taken down in the city of Lyme in the last two years. Those properties were magnets for property maintenance complaints. And by removing, strategically removing buildings that needed to be demolished, um, we can continue to reduce our property maintenance need. Um, again, we have a property talk about land bank, and we'll be giving you also a wrap-up report on the um, AG demolition, the Attorney General's uh, demolition report. Um, the good news there is there will be a small amount of residual money coming back in from our NSP demolitions. As that money comes back, we're able to reuse it. So um, even though that money is gone, that first 200 houses are down, um, if those people pay us, we can use that money again uh, right. to do more demolition. Um, those large grants, those $1.7 million in demolition funds, I do not see coming again. But uh, maintaining a small flow beyond what we can fund for CDBG is essential. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next under reports of officials, Doug Derliat with the Basic Pathways Program. Thanks, Mr. Chair and members of council. Um, I was asked to just give a, a snapshot report on this uh, Basic Manufacturing Pathway class. It's uh, funded with a $7,000 annual community development block grant. And uh, where the money goes is to pay for the wage for the instructor. We hold several of these classes per year and also it provides um, a booklet that the student keeps. This is a workbook that the student will use during the course of the class and it's also a good reference guide after the classroom experience. It has things such as helpful hints on how to conduct yourself during a job interview, some do's and don'ts on how to handle yourself in the workplace, um, hazardous material symbols, some guides on how to solve different types of math problems. The reason for that is uh, these days if you do apply even for entry level manufacturing jobs, chances are you're going to receive some kind of a test or an assessment. And uh, what we've had some students tell us when applying for work at places such as Dana or Midway Products is that the tests, uh, the math problems that you have in your program were almost identical to the problems that we had at our manufacturer place and it gave us pretty good preparation. Otherwise, if I hadn't taken this as a refresher, for lack of a better word, um, I might not have passed that math phase. I might not have gotten employed at this place. So it's, it's good to know. Um, what we primarily have targeted historically have been through partners such as the Job and Family Services, ABLE, Bradfield Center, LACA, and other community-based organizations. We have become involved in the open gate events which are held monthly over at uh, West Elm, the former school facility on West Elm Street. We've been able to uh, extend our outreach to community-based organizations that quite frankly I wasn't even aware existed in Lima and the surrounding area. So it's been a good outreach experience for us. Um, those historically um, have been unemployed. About 85% of our students in this program have been unemployed. They typically have less than eighth grade math skills. And basic uh, pathway students tend to be low skill, low wage earners or chronically unemployed or underemployed. So what we try to do is think about uh, an education experience, an education pathway beyond the basic pathway. But having said that, many of our students do get employed after the class. Um, just at uh, the last sampling of responses that we have had in the program, about 160 replied, 53% um, of those 85% uh, who were unemployed reported being employed, and about half of those employed are in manufacturing. About 15 different manufacturers have employed pathway students based on survey uh, responses that we get from the students. Um, as far as what the student would get if they successfully complete the class, um, 
again to encourage them to uh, pursue education beyond this basic pathway class. We have a representative of the Road State College Financial Aid Department walk them through a FAFSA application. That's the free application for federal student aid. And sometimes that removes a lot of the barriers in getting them to think about pursuing additional education after this experience because they might think they can't afford it. But what often these students find is they uh, qualify for Pell Grant money and often the maximum amount of $5,500 a year, which is renewable. And uh, that eliminates barriers for several students to pursue something at Apollo, Road State, UNO, or any of the other education institutions, which would be Pell eligible education experiences. Um, as far as um, what they would get if they do get certified, um, what we send them on a weekly basis, sometimes more often than that, are job openings in the area. They could be in Lima Allen County, they could be in some of the surrounding counties, but uh, they do have opportunity to apply for employment <coughs> based on the education they attained in the Basic Pathway Program. They also uh, receive some information of events which are coming up right now. Uh, Road State College, for example, will have mock interview days next month. This is where we have human resources officials from area employers actually set up appointment with the students and they conduct a rehearsed job interview and then that HR person will critique that person's performance and tell them where they can use some work, where their strengths are. Um, we also have at least two job fairs that we promote from Road State College. There's one coming up in March. Um, at the last one held in the fall, uh, there were 75, 80 employers at that job fair. It's held over in the Cook Street gym. Uh, and about a fourth of them were manufacturers. And uh, we encourage and we communicate to our students to participate if they are serious about attaining employment after their pathway experience. Um, with that, um, we're always open for ideas and suggestions and improving outreach, improving outcomes of the class, try to get people placed. Um, just a little sample that was in your, your packet here. Um, if you take even 20 people who have attained manufacturing employment and 10 people who were unemployed but attained even a minimum wage job, 1.5% uh, tax off them will recoup the $7,000 <coughs> investment. You get about $9,600 a year in uh, city taxes uh, off of that $7,000 investment. And we kept this estimate very, very conservative, but just to give you an idea that there is a return on your investment. It's not money which is being um, wasted and, and not getting any kind of a return. President. Mr. Lowe? Real quick question. On, on the second page, uh, about a quarter way down, it says, all five certified were unemployed at last report. When was that last report? It says four have not changed status. One indicated it's in the road state. You got five that finished and they still weren't employed. Is this after a certain amount of time? Or? Uh, typically, uh, there have been some exceptions. Typically, it'll be a few months before a student will finish this experience and then get employment. But uh, this class did get completed in the last part of October. Um, last we had heard from them, which had been in the past month or so, uh, they still reported being unemployed. One indicated that they were planning to attend classes at Road State, so they were thinking of furthering their education. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. This is great that we see 53% in Lima. That is real good. You're moving up the ladder there on that. And how are you dealing with the, the convicted felons that take this program? How we do admit it? them. Um, and it's up to the employer that uh, what, what their policy is on whether or not uh, they, they uh, employ convicted felons. Some do, some don't. Um, I refer them to some companies that I know that do give them a chance, mm -hmm. you know, depending on how long ago the conviction was, depending on what the nature of the crime was. Right. There are some criteria, but um, we try to get them placed. We don't turn them away if they want to enroll. Good. Thank you. Okay. Next class is? Yes. Next class is? Um, well, the next class is actually supposed to start in February, but it's full, so we'll have another one which will start March 10th. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Resolution 414. A resolution supporting Square Fair Inc. and a toast to the city. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. I move that resolution number 0414 be adopted on this first reading. Second. 
The motion and the second is to adopt resolution 414 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tepin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Resolution 414 has been adopted on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. <coughs> Ordinance 614. Levying special assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lima. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 614 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion of the second is to pass Ordinance 614 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Mr. Tappan. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. Yes. And Mr. Nixon. Yes. Ordinance 614 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 714. Sorry, I skipped one. Levying special assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lima. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 714 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 714 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tepin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 8, I'm sorry, Ordinance 714 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. <coughs> Ordinance 814. Levying special assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lyme, Ohio. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that, or I move that Ordinance 814 be passed on the first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 814 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 814 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 914. Loving special <laughs> assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lima. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Orbis 914 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion on the second is to pass Ordinance 914 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 914 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 1014. Amending Ordinance Number 18713. Mr. President, Mr. Tevin, I move that Ordinance 10 14 be passed on its first reading. Second. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 1014 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? No. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1014 has been passed on its first reading by a 7 to 1 vote. Ordinance 1114. Levying special assessments for the 2013 combined sidewalk project for construction of certain described sidewalks in accordance with resolution 1512 adopted October the 8th, 2012. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that ordinance 11-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion of the second is to pass ordinance 1114 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tepin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1114 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 1214. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Spirion Inc. Mr. President. Mr. Tepin. I move that Ordinance 12 14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 1214 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. Um, I had a discussion with Mr. Bartels, um, and, and a very good discussion, and he explained to me um, the reasons why we go through these, uh, that we're requesting this uh, contract. Uh, but I just wanted to go on record as saying with my labor background uh, and my history that I can't support this this ordinance, so I'll be voting no on it tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Is there any further discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? No. Mr. McLean? Yes. 
Mr. Lowe? No. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Miss Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? No. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1214 will be placed on second reading. Ordinance 1314. Authorizing payment to the Allen County Crime Stoppers from the Law Enforcement Trust Fund account. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that ordinance number 13-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion second is to pass ordinance 13-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. McClain. Yes. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1314 has been passed on its first reading by an <coughs> 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 1414. Authorizing the auditor to make payment to the State of Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. Mr. President? Mr. McClain? I move that Ordinance 1414 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 1414 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tappen? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1414 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 1514. Authorizing and directing the auditor to pay Altera Inc. for emergency repairs to a collapsed sewer lateral in the 300 block of West Murphy Street. Mr. President? Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 1514 be passed on its first reading. Second. <coughs> the motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 1514 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1514 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 1614. Amending Ordinance 16612. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 1614 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 1614 on its first reading. Is there any, any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? No. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1614 has been passed on its first reading by a 7 to 1 vote. Ordinance 1714. Amending Ordinance 6912. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 1714 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion the second is to pass Ordinance 1714 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. McLean. Just for clarification, this is um, part of the Cambridge Center uh, where the land area is. Um, once we get the new land set up so we have redundancy, we'll be able to do this work over in the uh, Cambridge Center, and that's what this is for. Okay. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? No. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1714 has been passed on its first <coughs> reading by a 7 to 1 vote. Ordinance 1814. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Geocentec Consultants, Inc. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 1814 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 1814 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1814 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 1914. Authorizing the mayor to enter to a contract with Smith Paving and Excavating Inc. <coughs> Mr. President? Ms. Adams? I move that ordinance number 19-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion on the second is to pass ordinance 1914 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President? Ms. Adams? If I could ask Mr. Elstro, um, I know this has been on the list under uh, projects. 
uh, when their possible start date for this project finally? Mr. Elstro. Council may recall that um, the West and Elizabeth uh, streetscape reconstruction project has been on the um, to-do list for quite a while. And in fact, uh, this project went out to bid last year, uh, but it was late in the construction season. Uh, it came in over uh, our engineer's estimates, uh, so we decided to defer it and uh, go out to bid at this time of the year when we typically get the best bids. This is for $1.3 million uh, of improvements. Uh, that is within our engineer's estimate. Uh, we expect construction, though we don't have a firm uh, uh, schedule from the contractor, we expect that the uh, construction will begin uh, yet this March. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elstra. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Elstra, I do have a question for you. Is this still got the, this is the, this has the reverse angle parking, correct? It does, sir. Yes. Okay. Where you're going to back in and pull out looking over the passenger side? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there any further discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? No. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 1914 has been passed on its first reading by a <coughs> 7 to 1 vote. Ordinance 2014. Authorize the mayor to enter into a local public agency agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation to enable the city to accept, expend, administer, and draw down funds for the All Safe Routes to School project. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that Ordinance 20-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 2014 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 2014 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 2114. Amending the ordinance 162.13. Mr. President? Ms. Adams? I move that ordinance 21 14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 2114 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? <coughs> will the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 2114 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 2214. Amending Ordinance 17413. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that Ordinance 22 14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 2214 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I just want to make note that the uh, Original ordinance 174-13 was in the amount of 14,987 and 49 cents because we had on here not to exceed what this ordinance is asking for an additional 1,511 dollars and 89 cents. So with the two added together going forward is all I'm wanting to make note of. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Is there any further discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Um, Ordinance 2214 has been passed on its First reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 2314. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with AEP Ohio for the Energy Saver Program Implementation Plan. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that Ordinance 23-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 2314 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. 
Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? No. Oh. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Miss Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 2314 has been passed on its first reading by a 7 to 1 vote. Ordinance 2414. Granting permission to Square Fair Inc. to hold a toast to the city in the town square. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. I move that communication 2414 be passed on its first reading. Second. second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 2414 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Let the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Mr. Tebbin. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. Yes. And Mr. Nixon. Yes. Ordinance 2414 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 2514. Providing for the issuance and sale of in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $650,000 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay cost of constructing the Westminster Waterline Project which includes constructing the St. John's Road booster station, installing three water pumps inside the base of the St. John's and Central Point Parkway water tower, installing two pressure reducing stations on Hanthorpe Road and McLean Road, and installing 12 inches and 16 inch water lines to connect the water system to water mains together with all necessary appurtenances there too. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that the Fiscal officer's certificate be received, filed, and accepted. Second. The motion in the second is stated by Councillor Tevin. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. McLean. Uh, I move that Ordinance 2514 be passed on its first reading. S second. Aye. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 2514 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. McLean. This is basically um, the bond's getting ready to move water lines out to Westminster to get all this stuff ready for that. Uh, that's a good addition for our city uh, use of our water that we have readily available. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Is there any further discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 2514 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 2614. Providing for the issuance and sale of in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $4,650,000 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay cost of improving and rehabilitating the city's 25 sanitary sewer lift stations together with all necessary pertinences there too. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that the fiscal officer's certificate be received, filed, and accepted. Second. The motion the second is uh, to receive, file, and approve the fiscal officer's certificate. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 2614 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 2614 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 2614 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 2714. No. Was removed. Was removed. Ordinance 2814. Providing for, the issu <laughs> <laughs> Providing for the issuance and sale of in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $2,149,070 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay cost of constructing, renovating, installing, and equipping the city's Hall of Justice including the acquisition and installation of computer equipment, together with all necessary appurtenances there, too. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that the fiscal officer's certificate be received, filed, and accepted. Second. The motion in the second is to receive, file, and accept the fiscal officer's certificate. Is there any discussion? 
All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. President? Mr. McClain. I move that Ordinance 2814 be passed on its first reading. Second. second. The motion on the second is to pass Ordinance 2814 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President? Mr. McClain. A little earlier about this equipment over in the Cambridge building. This is where the redundancy is going to come in for our land system. And once we get that up, we'll do the work on the Cambridge Center. And part of that is, is part of these bonds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McClain. Is there any further discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 2814 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 2914. Providing for the issuance and sale of the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $450,000 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds pay the cost of acquiring and equipping a fire truck to the fire department together with all necessary appurtenances thereto. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that the fiscal officer certificate be received, filed, and accepted. Second. The motion in the second is to receive, file, and accept the fiscal officer certificate. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that ordinance number 29-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass ordinance 29-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tepin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 2914 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 3014. Providing for the issuance and sale in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $700,000 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds, pay the cost of expanding the parking lot for the utility customer service building and the Cambridge Center and peak flow and attenuation into the combined sewer system in compliance with the goals of the Clean Water Act, together with all necessary appurtenances thereto. Mr. President. Mr. Tebb. I move that the fiscal officer certificate be received, filed, and accepted. Second. Second. The motion of the second is to receive, file, and accept the fiscal officer certificate. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 3014 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion on the second is to pass Ordinance <coughs> 3014 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? All those in, I'm sorry, I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? No. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes, Ordinance 3014 has been passed on its first reading by a 7 to 1 vote. Ordinance 3114. Providing for the issuance and sale of, in the aggregate principal amount, not to exceed $212,810 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay cost of acquiring and installing a generator for a city fire station, together with all necessary <coughs> appurtenances thereto. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that the fiscal officer certificate be received, filed, and accepted. Second. The motion in the second is to receive, file, and accept the fiscal officer certificate. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that 31-14 uh, uh, be passed on the first reading. Second. second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 3114 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 3114 has been passed on its first reading by an <coughs> vote. Ordinance 3214. Providing for the issuance and sale of in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $220,000 in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay the cost of acquiring and equipping an ambulance together with all necessary pertinences thereto. Mr. President. <coughs> Mr. Tevin. I move that the fiscal officer's certificate be received, filed, and accepted. Second. 
A motion and the second is to receive, file, and accept the fiscal officer's certificate. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that ordinance number 32-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass ordinance 32-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Mr. Tappet. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. Yes. And Mr. Nixon. Yes, ordinance 3214 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 3314. Authorize the mayor to enter into a contract for the purchase of sodium chloride rock salt. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that ordinance 33-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion of the second is to pass ordinance 3314 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Ms. Adams. How, Mr. Elstro. I hope there's no further need. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Allen, uh, kudos to you and your department uh, for the efforts made on the city streets and the uh, salt that's been applied. Uh, your department should be very proud of the efforts they put in and hours. Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Is there any further discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Ordinance 3314 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. We'll commence with miscellaneous business, but I will remind council members we do have an executive session this evening. Oh, my God. Please, brief. Mr. Gordon. Um, yeah, I want to start by thanking um, some of the department heads that, that helped me during these last few weeks that, that um, I've, or I should say first few weeks that I've been on city council. Uh, Saul got my first complaint, and I thanked him personally, but I want to thank Amy and Odom and uh, Chief Martin, uh, Mr. Elstro. And then I'd like to also thank uh, Chief Hefner. Uh, we had a fantastic tour of all the fire departments, all the equipment. And uh, there's some, some great stuff there. And uh, all his guys were excited to, to chip in and, and help show me around. So I had a good time. Um, I wanted to remind folks to uh, check on your elderly neighbors. It's cold. Uh, especially the next couple days. Um, again, as I said, the, the first meeting that I was here about, the, you know, bring your pets inside, don't leave them outside. Um, I also wanted to um, remind people that there are still homeless folks out there and uh, they're living on the streets and, and I pray that maybe <laughs> one day uh, we'll be able to do more in our community to, to help take care of them. Um, and that's all that I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Mr. McLean. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Just one item tonight. I'd uh, like to refer an issue to the Safety Service Committee to review the uh, dog ordinance. <coughs> Who's second? The motion the second is to refer to the which committee? Safety, Safety Services. Safety Services Committee. The dog ordinance? Dog ordinance. Okay. Let me have one. Um, Just to review. And <coughs> We don't have just a dog ordinance, do we? Or vicious, vicious dog. Vicious dog. Vicious dog ordinance. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, the motion is stated by Council McLean. Is there <coughs> any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, the All West Elizabeth Project. Uh, I have looked at that, and I think it is, it's a wonderful <coughs> addition that they're going to add to the downtown Lima area, but I, I have a real safety concern on, on the way the parking is, and uh, like our president stated, um, once you're headed north, you have to brake, you have to back in, and then when you pull out, you have to look over, if you have a passenger, you have to look over your passenger's 
I see if an oncoming car is coming, and I just, my personal opinion, I just think it's a, a huge safety uh, hazard. So that is the reason why I voted no on that. Um, one other thing is, I appreciate the individuals that are here that are coming out uh, to listen to counsel, but please be cognizant of, of how loud you're talking. When I got individuals from this side speaking and stating opinions, I can't hear it because I'm talking in the in the audience that good. So just <coughs> really be cognizant of that. And the other thing that I would like to bring up is um, in 2012, October. Uh, Good people over at LACNIP came and expressed that they wanted to uh, use the fire station. And uh, we had some talks and uh, some things we agreed on, some things we agreed to disagree on. But at the end, we came to a solution. And uh, we were told that we would get a, a progress report, a one-year progress report in the month of October. And I waited till the year ended out to see if we, we would get that. and. Uh, the Neighborhood Concerns Committee, and we haven't got that. And uh, if at all possible in the near future, uh, could you not only let us know, council, so we can, uh, you know, pump you up at the at the meetings, but also uh, let the people at home know your progress and how important that building is to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Mr. Tevin? Um, I would just like to echo Councilor Gordon's concerns with the cold weather with uh, those those in need and, and especially elderly neighbors or shut-ins that uh, if we have the opportunity, we should all be checking in on. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tevin. Ms. Adams? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I need to refer to the Public Works Committee a review of the Public Works capital improvements for 2014 to include streets, buildings, Parks and stormwater. Second. The motion in the second is as stated by Councillor Adams. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Uh, also, I would like to refer to the Public Works Committee uh, a damage claim that recently was denied and would like it to go to committee for the committee and hopefully council under moral obligation. Second. second. The motion of the second is to refer, what's the name on the claim? Uh, which claim? Freeman. The Freeman claim that was recently reviewed uh, by the Small Claims Advisory Committee to the Public Works Committee for review and consideration as a moral obligation. Is there any discussion? Um, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. And finally, I would like to call a meeting of the Public Works Committee for this coming Monday, February 3rd at 530 in the Council Conference Room with the topics being what was just previously discussed, the capital projects for 2014 and the damage claim. What time was that, Tracy? 5.30. 5.30. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Mr. Glenn? Yes, got a couple things. Mr. Glenn? Yes, got a couple things here. Uh, first of all, I uh, have some good news there. Uh, it was a house on uh, State Street, and this is something we've been working on very hard, and she's willing to cooperate and work with us on some things to help her out. So I don't need to call her name or anything like that. This has been something we've been working on for the last uh, six, seven months and helping her get her property up to par. Also, I'd like to thank the person, and uh, I know I cannot accept it. Uh, we was out helping people with uh, doing the sidewalk when Amy came out and said that we got to get the sidewalks clean. I had a lot of calls, and so we got together, and a couple of us got together and helped some people, elder people out with their sidewalks so our kids can walk down them. Uh, the person who donated to snowblowers 
and call me today to go pick them up. I cannot get them. You cannot donate to me. Uh, there was under Councilman Glenn's name. I cannot <coughs> accept them. Uh, he or she did not leave a name. Uh, just left a message for me to go pick them up and help people out. So I cannot accept them. Uh, I'll be violating the ethic law, and, and you had them in my name. And so thank you so much for your concern. It's value over over $2,500. And I thank him so much. Uh, my understanding he's not from Lima. He was just riding around and he was getting ready to go home from visiting his parents. And, and But they never gave me his name. So if he watching or any of his kin folks watching that know about it, I want to thank him. Uh, the retail store would not give me no more information on him. He just said they asked me to pick him up and he had him on a Councilman Glenn name. But I appreciate that. Uh, also, uh, I'd like to thank all the folks that came out to the 31 MLK program. It was great. Uh, Mr. Barker did an excellent job. We gave our top cop out, Officer Merrill. Well, he did an excellent job. And I uh, appreciate everyone coming out. My wife did a dynamic job and, uh, uh, for giving history out and video, showing the video out. Also, we lost a trailblazer there, Miss Napier. And uh, I know uh, Robin Borden is feeling kind of tough on this one. Now, but him and her was so close in the Mark Luther King Neighborhood Association. Uh, Ms. Napier was a pioneer there. Uh, when them two got together and put together the Dr. Mark Luther King Neighborhood Association, uh, they stood right there. And Robin Borden, I'm going to say, you hang in there, though. I know you heard in there because you. Wherever you see her, you was there with her. She was there with you. She had your back. Uh, and I was a young guy then. I mean, you guys was running, and I'm still young. I mean, you guys was doing that and putting it together. And it was like, so exciting for our neighborhood association. A funeral will be in the newspaper, and uh, we'll go from there. But we hope to see everyone come out, the neighborhood association come out, and uh, let the uh, Martin Luther King Neighborhood Association know that you got them in their prayer, also our family. And know that you got them in their prayer. Uh, on uh, February 3rd, we're going to have a, a community economic development meeting. And Ms. Adams took my time, so I hope I can push it. You think you guys will be done by 6 30? Yeah. Okay, we're going to put, uh, I'm going to make a motion. I think it's already in committee here, right? The zoning overlay, overlay in Main Street. It's not in committee, but I'm going to make a yes, motion. I yep. put it yeah, in. Yeah, you already put it in there. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have a meeting at 630 <coughs> here at Economic uh, Development Committee. Everybody okay with that? Everybody on that committee? Yeah. Okay. okay. And that's it for me. All right, thank you. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Miles? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, like Gordon, I, I would like to thank, too, all the various department heads that I've had the opportunity to spend time with over the last three weeks here. It really has been an eye-opener for me on a lot of things here that I was not aware of. And so I am very appreciative of all of <coughs> the time uh, spent with me uh, learning about their departments and introducing me to their staffs here. So thanks for the warm welcome, you know, and I appreciate your time that you spent with me. Uh, a special thanks to the, um, to the guys that um, on the station over there out south, uh, Miles and his group. I can't think of what station is that. But um, I visited them on a very, very cold morning. And I spent a lot, of, a lot of time at that fire station that morning listening to their stories and, and hearing of some of the opportunities they've had to serve in this community with the, with the rooms that they were on. And they, they, were, they just really have a great appreciation for what they do and for their jobs. And I, I really, really appreciate the time that they spent telling me the number of years that they've worked and the different uh, things that they've done over the years and how they have served this community. So it was very, very enlightening to, to speak to those guys and, and, just, and to hear their heart for what they do. Along those same lines, I would like to offer condolences to the two firefighters in Toledo that, that lost their lives yeah. in the line of duty. That could very easily happen here, you know, yes. to our firefighters and to our police officers. So let us never take for granted the work that they do on our behalf. And then lastly, I want to say kudos also to the uh, streets department. Uh, I live on a cul-de-sac here, and there's very little traffic back there. But yet I've seen that truck come through there twice, you know, in the last couple of days. They're clearing our streets here. So, again, I'm also very appreciative of, of Elsto and his staff and yep. Saul, all of them, you know, all the extra time that they spent, you know, making sure that, you know, the streets are clear. 
and I, I so appreciate them and I want to make sure that they know that a great job is being done by all, all the personnel involved in that. So, and that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Miles. Um, I don't have too much. I do want to uh, express appreciation, uh, Mr. Elstro, to you and to Saul Allen for your department and the work that they have done. Uh, this weather has not been very merciful. Um, your work, your hard work is appreciated. You could almost reach genius status if you would have prevented the snow in the first place. <laughs> um, somebody once recently suggested that we pass an ordinance against any more snow and against temperatures below 30. Second. And yes, we can. I will only caution that my response was once we passed an ordinance prohibiting rain during square fare. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work out real well. So, uh, with that, Mr. Tevin. Mr. President, I move that Lima City Council adjourn into executive session for purposes of discussing real estate. Second. The motion the second is that Lima City Council will adjourn into executive session for the purposes of discussing real estate. <coughs> is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McClain? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. And Mr. Nixon? Yes. Well, the City Council will adjourn into executive session in five minutes. <coughs> the Capitol.